Hello folks, in this video series I'm going to show you how to create this Castle Defender clone. Now you may have played this type of game in the past and the concept is quite simple. There are endless waves of enemies attacking your castle and you're supposed to prevent them from reaching it and damaging it. So now I just finished level 1 and it moves on to level 2. Now each level increases the difficulty so there's going to be more of these enemies and some of them are going to be stronger than the previous ones. So as you kill them you collect money and you can spend this money on upgrading your castle or adding more towers to help you defend it. So that's essentially it, it just keeps on going and going. Uh, you can use this money to, for example, you can see I've got a thousand health on this castle. I can use this to increase the maximum health of it. And as these guys reach it, they start to actually deal damage to it. So I can use this little repair button to fix up the health a little bit. Uh, and you can see as they do more and more damage, the castle health drops and the picture for it also starts to change. So there's a bunch of little features to add into this game and I'm going to go into the code just now. So I'll start off with a new uh, Python file here. Now I'm using Sublime Text Editor for all of my code. You may be using uh, Virtual Studio or PyCharm or something else, but it doesn't really make a difference as long as you're comfortable using the IDE that you're going to be working with. So first of all, I need to, as always, just import a few libraries to start with. So I'll add a comment to say import libraries. And the one that I'm going to need to start with is Pygame. So import Pygame. Now once Pygame is imported, you need to initialize it. So initialize Pygame. Now this is kind of boiler code that you're going to need for pretty much every Pygame project, but it's good to go through it anyway as a reminder. So we say pygame.init. And next thing I want to do is create the game window. So I'll add a comment here again, game window, and I need to define a couple of variables. So they're going to be defining the size of this window. The first one I'm going to call screen underscore width. So that's just how wide it's going to be. And I'm going to say 800 pixels and screen underscore height. And this will be 600 pixels. Now you can adjust this. Uh, you can increase or decrease it as you wish to suit the size of your screen. So these are the sizes that I'm going to be going with for this video. Now with that done, I can create the game window itself. So I'll add a comment here to say create game window. And to do this, I need to assign it to some kind of variable. So I'm going to call my window screen. I'll say screen equals pygame.display.set underscore mode. And in here, I'm going to put in those two arguments for the screen width and the screen height. So this just tells Pygame to create a display window that is going to be this many pixels wide and this many pixels tall. And the other thing I want to do is give this window a title. So I can say pygame.display.set underscore caption, and I'm going to call this Castle Defender. So this is going to be the text that comes up at the top of the game window up here. Now with that done, if I run this code, you'll see that it flashes up for a second and then just disappears again. And the reason for that is it's just running the code line by line until it gets to the end and then the script's finished. But what I actually need is a continuous loop and that's going to be my game loop. So for this, I'll add a comment to say game loop and I'm going to use a while loop. So I can say while, but first I need some kind of condition. I need something to be true for this to be within the while loop. So before I actually define my while loop, I'll create a variable and I'll call this variable run. I'll say that run is equal to true and then I can say while run. This essentially means while run is true, we execute all the code that's within this loop. So this is where all of the game logic is actually ha handled. However, if I was to run this just now, it would hang up because there's nothing within the while loop and there's no way of exiting it. So before I do anything else, I want to add in some way of handling mouse clicks and button presses and so on. And that's going to be an event handler. So I'll add a comment to say event handler. And to do this, I use a for loop. So we say for event in pygame.event.get. And this basically just iterates through all of the events list that Pygame is constantly receiving. So when you're moving the mouse or you're clicking or you're pressing anything on the keyboard, it's picking those up and it's going to be giving those back as an event here. But I'm looking for a particular type of event. And the one I'm looking for is when you click the X in the top right corner. So I can say if event.type is equal to pygame.quit, which is what that corresponds to, then I want to exit this entire loop. Now remember, this while loop is only going to be running when this condition is met. So when the run variable is set to true, this while loop will run. But as soon as that variable is set to false, it's going to kick out of this loop. So that's all I need to do here. I can just say run equals false. And of course, once all of that's done, and I'm out of the while loop, I need to tidy up by saying pygame.quit. 
So just like I said pygame.init at the very beginning, I now quit pygame right at the end. Run this again. Now I've got my game window. It says castle defender up here, and you notice it's not going anywhere. So if I click the X, it now closes out. So that's pretty much the bare bones of any pygame project. I've got my game window, I've got a game loop, and I've got a basic event handler to be able to quit. Uh, now before I go any further, I want to add in one more thing, which is a frame rate. So the game is just at the moment going to run as quickly as the computer can process it, which means that on different computers, the speed of it is going to vary. I want to fix that to a particular value. So to do that, I'm going to come back up here above my game loop, and I'm just going to define a couple more variables. So I'll say, first of all, I'll define a clock. I'll say clock equals pygame.time.clock. And then I set a variable for my frame rate, which is my frames per second FPS. I'll set this to 60 frames per second, and that's going to lock it so that it never goes above this value. Now I just go into my game loop, and right at the start, I can say clock, which I've just created up here, dot tick, and in the brackets, I put in the FPS variable. So if I run this, nothing's actually going to change, but the game is now fixed to 60 frames per second. So with that all set up, let's actually start putting something onto the screen. Uh, the first thing I want to do is load in a background and draw that onto the screen. Now I'll come down here underneath where I've got my frame rate set and just above the game loop and I'll have a section here for loading images. Say load images and the first one is going to be the background. So I can say bg equals pygame.image.load and in here I need to give the full uh, location of the file and the full name of the file relative to the folder that I'm currently in. So you can see here, this is the structure of my current project. I am within this folder and this is where my code is. Now next to the code is another folder called IMG and that's where I'm keeping my other images. So that means that to load this in, I need to say first of all IMG so that it can access that folder forward slash bg.png which is my background. Now you may have your folders named differently or the files in different locations. So if you get in errors such as file not found when you're trying to run this, it's most likely because you just need to update the location and the name of the file to make sure that the code is actually able to find it. So with that done, I just say convert alpha. And that's the background loaded in. So now I can show it onto the screen. I'll come underneath where I've got my uh, FPS control here but above the event handler I typically keep the event handler right at the bottom of the loop so in here I just say screen which is the game window that I created earlier so basically everything that I'm going to be drawing is going to be going onto this screen variable here say screen dot blit and then the image which is BG and then the location so this background image I'm just going to put in the top left corner of the screen so I'll put it zero zero Actually, I need to put that in brackets first. So zero zero. Now I can run this, and nothing changes. The reason for that is, Pygame essentially is going to take all of these different commands throughout the game loop, and I need to tell it right at the end to take all of those and actually put it onto the screen. Essentially, update that display with all of the different changes that have happened. So whether it's the castle or the enemies, take all of that within the loop and update the screen. So just down here. Uh, after the game loop, but ensure that you're indented so that it's still within the while loop, I say update the display window. So we say pygame.display.update. If I run this again, I now have this background coming up. Whoops. So this is kind of starting to come together now. The next thing I want to do is put the castle onto the screen as well. So I'm going to come back up here to where I'm loading my images and now I need to load in the image for the castle. Add a little comment to say castle. Now if I open this folder out, uh, you notice that this castle folder is within the image folder. Uh, but I've got three different images here and this is just to show different healths. So when the castle is fully on full health, it's got one image, but then as it gets damaged, I use different images to show that. So I will add that in later, but for now, just to keep things simple, I'm going to start off with the fully undamaged and fully fixed castle. So that's the castle underscore image underscore 100. So again, I just say pygame.image.load and it's within the image folder. Uh, but note, because it's then got another folder within it, which is castle, I need to add that in here as well. So I need to say image forward slash castle forward slash again, castle underscore 100 
.png. And that is the location of that file relative to where my code is. And again, .convert underscore alpha. And that's the image loaded in. Now I could do the same thing as I did with the background and just come into the game loop and say screen.blit castle image. But for the castle, it's gonna have a lot more functionality. So actually what I want to do is use some object oriented programming here and create a class for the castle. So again, above the game loop, I'm gonna create some classes. So this is going to be my castle class. I'll say class castle with a capital C and it just needs the constructor to start off. So I say def underscore init. And the first argument is always going to be self. The next argument is going to be the image. So I will say image 100. Now again, I'm not loading in all of the damaged images yet. So for now, I'm just taking in image 100, which is the full health castle. Then X and Y arguments, which are going to be the positions where I want to put it onto the screen. And lastly, the scale, because some of these images are all different sizes. Um, so this just allows me to control the sizes of them individually. So with that done, I can now start defining some of the variables for this castle class. First of all, the castle needs to have a health. And I'm starting this off at 1000. So I could have this as one of the arguments, but I'm kind of fixing it. And the castle instance is always going to have this health to start with. So I'm just fine defining it within this, uh, this init method. It also needs to have a max health. So sex self uh, dot max underscore health is equal to self dot health. So to start off with, it's going to be a thousand. But then as you use those different upgrades, the max health is actually going to increase. The next thing that I need to do is assign a self dot image. So I need to be able to say self dot image equals some kind of image. Now I could just say image 100, but remember that might be too big or too small. I need to scale it first of all. And before I can scale it, I need to find out how big it currently is. So I can say here width equals image 100 dot get underscore width and height equals image 100 dot get underscore height. Now note that I haven't added self dot at the start of these. That's because I don't actually ever need to access these outside of the class. So these, these variables are going to be defined here and then I'm just going to use them straight away afterwards. So I don't need them after this. I can say self.image equals, uh, in fact, self.image 100 equals pygame.transform. Keep putting commas instead of full stops here. Transform dot scale. And this is where I can scale up or down the image that I started with. So I take that image in, that image 100, and then I give it an X scale, which is going to be an integer value of that width variable that I've just worked out multiplied by the scale, and then an integer of the height multiplied by the scale. And hopefully I've got the number of brackets correct there. We'll find out shortly. So having the image is fine, but what I also need to be able to position it and to be able to work out collision and positions and coordinates is to be able to take a rectangle from this image. So here I can say self.rect equals self.image100.get underscore rect for rectangle. And this basically takes the border or the outline of that image and just creates a rectangle from it. So I can now assign positions to where that rectangle is going to be on the screen. I can say that self.rect x, which is the x coordinate of that rectangle, is going to be this x argument that I'm feeding in when I create this castle instance. Oops. And then self.rect.y is just going to be the same, but for the y coordinate. So the castle class is now, or rather the constructor is now complete. There's other functions that I need to add or other methods that I need to add to the castle class, but that's the constructor pretty much done for now. So that means that I'm able to create instances of that class. Now if I run this at the moment, nothing actually happens. I have this class here, but I've not created anything from it. So let's just say here, create castle. And now I can call, call my instance anything, but I'm gonna call this castle, let's say castle equals castle with capital C to ensure that it's calling this class here. And then I can start putting in the arguments one by one. So the arguments that I need here are just four. I need the image, the X and Y coordinates, and then the scale. The image I've just loaded in, it's castle underscore image underscore 100. I can put that in here as the first argument. 
then the second argument is going to be the x coordinate. So I kind of want it to be coming in from the right hand side of my game window. So I can take the entire screen width and just subtract 250 pixels from it. So it's going to be 200 pi 250 pixels from the left of the, uh, the right hand side of the screen. For the y coordinate, I take my screen height and I subtract 300 pixels from that. So it's going to be 300 pixels from the bottom of the screen. And lastly, I need to scale this. So I will say 0.2, which just means scale it to 20% of the original image size, because the original image size was pretty massive. If I run this again, yep, I did mess up the parentheses. So what have I done here? Self.image. Oh, of course, uh, this should say image 100. There we go. Okay, so it's all working fine. Now I know that I have a castle instance created, but nothing is coming up on the screen. And that's because I'm not calling any kind of draw or blit onto this. I'm just telling Python to create a castle instance and it does that, but it doesn't show it onto the screen for me. So that means I need to add in some kind of additional method within this class. So underneath my init method, I'll unindent it to make sure that I'm lined up with this one. And I'll say def draw. So I define a draw method. This doesn't take any arguments except for self. And then all I'm going to do here is just assign uh, a self.image variable. So my self.image is going to be, now this is going to change as the castle takes damage, but at the moment I only have one image, which is this one. So I can just say that the image that I want to use is the castle image with 100% health. Once that's confirmed, I can put it onto the screen. I can say again, screen.blit, exactly the same way as I did with the background. If you remember from the game loop, I'm saying screen.blit and then the image and the coordinates. So I say screen.blit self.image and the coordinates are already defined within the rectangle. Remember when I created a rectangle from the image, I assigned the X and the Y arguments to its coordinates. So I can just put in here self.rect and that's going to draw, uh, it's going to position the image at the location of that rectangle. So that's nearly done. If I run this, still nothing changes because I'm not calling this draw method anywhere. What I actually need to do is go down into my game loop and call that draw method within here. So let's just add a little comment. Say draw castle, oops, and I'll say castle, which is that instance that I created here, dot draw, which is the method within the class itself. So that means that I can access those methods by calling them from the instance here. So castle.draw is going to put that onto the screen for me. From the snap, you can see castles appear down there. Now, one interesting thing to keep in mind is that within this game loop, it's going to draw things in the order that I'm asking it to. So first of all, I'm saying draw the background and then draw the castle. If I flip this round and put this before the background, so I say castle.draw screen.blit the background image, Run this again, and now it looks like the castle has disappeared. But what's actually happened is it's drawn the castle first, and then it's drawn the background over it. So it's just something to be mindful of whenever you're doing this kind of stuff, is you need to remember the order that you're asking Python to draw things in. If I put this back to how it was, you can see the castle is coming up uh, just as it was before. All right, so that's going to about do it for this video. If you found this useful, then please do leave a like and consider subscribing. And thanks for watching.